Hey, this is Anne Zaprasny, and I'm joined by a good friend of mine, Lee Rubin. Hey, Anne, how are you? Hey, Lee, you know what? I know about your accomplished background, but I know a lot of my clients don't. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. I am a uh, former student athlete, was very fortunate to play football at Penn State University, was a three-year starter and captain there. Uh, woo yeah, We are. <laughs> Penn State. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> had a had a great experience there, but like most student athletes, did not play professionally. Uh, took my talents to corporate America, and worked for some amazing organizations uh, in the human resources function. I was a, a, a recruiter for about fifteen years with companies like Merrill Lynch, Johnson and Johnson, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Dow Jones. So some great companies. Uh, did that uh, as I mentioned for about fifteen years and left about 10 years ago to do the, 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 the speaking thing full-time. So I'm a full-time uh, professional speaker, do a lot of keynotes for major organizations and conferences. Yeah, so for me, I was honored to meet Lee because um, I had this opportunity to see him speak in person and uh, he rocked the house and did a really good job. And mm -hmm. he really talks about the five C's of teamwork. Yes. And uh, I'm uh, honored to share the screen with him or screen, share the floor with him. M uh, my name is Anza Prasny, and my business is called Great Sports Minds. And I work with athletes and business professionals to transform performance. But Lee, right now, there's not a lot of performance going on. No, on no. We're, 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 yeah, we're in the middle of a, a, an unprecedented and interesting time. And, you know, from, from, from my perspective, uh, we're, we're not sure exactly how long this is going to last. So just trying to find ways to add value to the organizations and the people to help them execute and perform at their absolute best. Yeah, what I'm finding with my clients is, uh, and my client base is typically athletes, teams, and some business professionals, yes. is the emotions people are experiencing right now are real. Absolutely. And, and the pain and the sadness I have for our seniors, it's tough. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. There's just, um, you know, this too will pass. Uh, but there's some opportunities, as you mentioned, for some of our seniors and people who are ending certain, certain phases of their career. That, and, and, and we can't pretend like those emotions aren't real. They, they're very real. Yeah, so I did a survey with a community of uh, customers a few weeks ago, and number one, most athletes say they're frustrated, but my seniors say they're devastated. And so part of what our dialogue has been around, how do you deal with your devastation with healthy coping strategies? So what thoughts do you have in terms of really helping people cope during this time? Yeah, from, from my perspective and my experience, I, I think the key is perspective, right? It's, it's, it's a matter of looking, the situation is what the situation is, it's outside of our control, but how do, we, how do we view the situation? Do we see it as a problem or do we see it as an opportunity? I think that's the key to any difficult situation. It's, it's how do we change what's going on between the ears to make sure that we're, we're seeing it properly and we're seeing it in a way that benefits us and our team. I love the word perspective. I yeah. love the word perspective and opportunity. What I know is athletes in their history have had adversity. They may have yes. been injured, they may have been cut, they may have made a team but not had the playing time they wanted. Athletes know how to deal with adversity. And so this is a time they need to lean on those skills and lean on their resiliency and rise up. Agreed. So what thoughts Agreed. do they have about that? Yeah, I, I, think, I think what you're saying is critical. Um, I think sometimes when we face a new situation, when we face something that isn't necessarily familiar, we fail to sort of reach back to uh, our, our memory bank, so to speak, and take from those past experiences that were tough at the time and what did we learn from those experiences that we can bring into this experience? Because this seems so devastating at the moment. But as you mentioned, we've been through some tough times before. We've been through some difficulty before. It may have been different in, its, in, in our interaction with it, but the, the, the concepts and the principles that we can bring from our past um, can help us through this one, right? It, it, it's funny, I, I talked to buddies that I played with 25, 30 years ago, 
and, and we, we have the same conversation, right? If we could get through that, we can get through this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think about uh, my personal journey. I lost my senior season of college basketball due to an injury. Wow. And in the moment, it was devastating. But when I was able to play again and just play because I love to play, right. I was able to feel the joy that the sport brought me. Absolutely. And so for all these seniors who've lost their season, the challenge I have for them is, why do you play? Why do you play? And most will say, because I love my sport. Yep. And there'll be a time again where you'll be able to enjoy your sport. And you'll, you'll, you'll get those endorphins and you'll get that joy again. It, 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 so I do a lot of work, a lot of uh, stuff on teamwork and, and, and building teams. The other thing, the other reason people love being a part of a team and playing a sport is the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the camaraderie um with other people and to your point um while this is devastating now there will be other opportunities to get that connection with other people maybe it won't be playing a particular sport but it will be and there will be other opportunities um to, to have that sense of connectedness with other people Absolutely. Last week, I ran a Zoom call with my nine college friends, and we had a gallery view, and uh, I think I laughed harder during that one hour <laughs> connecting time with my friends than I did the whole week, right? We got to be creative and look for opportunities to stay connected and experience Absolutely. that brotherhood, that sisterhood. Absolutely. No, I agree 100%. Yeah, so... Closing advice, if, you, if we were to bring this call to a close, one or two things you would offer to your, your client base that is struggling. Sure, just, just based on this conversation, number one is don't be, no denial. Don't pretend like you're not feeling what you're feeling. Um, with that said, we've got to cope properly, and I think the key to that is having the right perspective, change, changing how you're looking at the situation. Um, I call it heat and pressure, right? There, there's always going to be some, some challenge, heat and pressure. And it will either, based on our perspective, either bring us together or tear us apart. And that's really up to you and the choices we make and the maturity that we have. Love it. Love it. I'm going to throw in one thing. Athletes, you know how to work out both with your team and without your team. Your body needs the endorphins. Yes. So imagine when this pandemic is over and you looked over your shoulder, will you be proud of what you accomplished during that time? Did you work out every day? Did you fuel your body appropriately? Did you read any books? Did you grow your skill set? Did you give to others? Envision it's over, and you're really proud of how you handled it. And for the athletes who are still going to be competing next season, did you outwork your competitor? Yes. So Lee, yes, so. so great to see you. I'm going to share some time with you. Stay well until next time. You too, thanks Anne, so much.